All right, so this is the first on a series I'm going to be doing about self-hosting. Let me open up my dashboard here, and you can see all the different services that I host myself. I'm going to be going through setting these up, installing, and configuring most of these, if not all of them. But what we're going to do is start with what the backbone of all these services. All these services run on Open Media Vault. Now, Open Media Vault is a Linux distribution that makes it very easy to get a server set up. Um, you do have a couple other options. Unraid, which is very popular and very polished, and TrueNAS. Those are a couple other good options. I am more familiar with Linux, so I and I've. Tr Open Media Vault was my first choice and I never had any issues with it so I've stuck with it. I'm going to log in here. Now, Open Media Vault does have some criticisms. It is uh, a little glitchy in the web interface. It does have some issues especially with updating and like creating Docker containers at least in OMV4 which is what I'm running I have not used OMV5 yet so those issues may have been resolved in that version but in this version and the previous versions I've used it always has been a little glitchy run into errors while using the web interface but once you get it initially set up you really do not need to use the web interface very often so once you get Open Media Vault installed on whatever device you're using and I use a Rack Pro 64 you can set it up on a Pi 4 you can set it up on any x86 hardware whatever you want once you get it set up um, or installed you're going to need to do some setting up or configuring now you don't need to change everything uh, here under general settings you can see you can change the port and your password to log in you can set your time zone, your time server, um, network here, uh, host name I've set, and domain name. I do not think I've changed anything else in here, which you definitely can if you want to set up some custom firewall rules or any of these other uh, settings need to be customized. It gives you the option to do everything you need from an easy to use graphical interface. Um, moving on though, let's see, what else have we here? Scheduled jobs. I have one scheduled job that I've set in here, which is it updates a subdomain with my home with my ex home external IP address. So I always have access to these services. Update management, like I said, this can be very glitchy. So I actually never use this part anytime I want to update I SSH into this box and do a sudo omb update and that will update it and this seems much more reliable way of doing it than doing it from the web interface plugins plugins are not as prominent as they used to be in previous versions of Open Media Vault. So before if you wanted to like set up Qubit torrent service or any other kind of torrent client on your Open Media Vault, there is usually a plugin in here that you could install and set it up. But with the advent of Docker, almost everything is set up through a Docker container. So th this has not really been as useful in the more recent versions of Open Media Vault is kind of getting phased out, it looks like. Now, this, uh, this just shows you all the disks that are connected to your device. Um, you can see I got an EMMC card in there, which is what Open Media Vault is actually installed to. Main disk, secondary disk, backup to those first two disks. And this one I don't really use. You have smart controls, gives you device status of your disk. RAID management I don't use because I don't have two similar size disks. If I did, say I have another eight terabyte 
disk, I could put it in RAID 1 to mirror it and have some uh, redundancy, uh, although again, RAID is not a backup, so still you need to make legitimate backups, which is what I do to that uh, 5 terabyte disk. File systems, you can see you can um, format your drives to whatever file system you would want. I use ext4 because I'm a pleb. Now you could use butterfs or uh, ZFS, although from my understanding it's a little more difficult to get ZFS working in Linux and in Open Media Vault, but there are instructions online on how to do that. Now where you're going to be spending most of your time, after you get Open Media Vault s stood up and you have your hard drive plugged in and you look in here and it sees it here and it sees the file system here or you format it to whatever file system you want then you're going to need to start setting up users and shared folders. Now, I already went over the way I do it. You might say, okay, I only have two people using this server. That's a lot of usernames for two people and yeah, that's that's true. Um, but I go over my Name, username scheme on my website. And you can see the reason that I do it in this way. Here, I explain it. I'm not going to go through this. If you want to look at the reason why I do it this way, give that article a read. Well, you can see uh, some of the directory structure here where I serve my movies, music, TV, um, backups get saved to all the Nginx sites and all the Docker volumes that are mounted there. So let's go, let's move on to Docker here. Here you can see all the containers that I have. Most of them are running, some of them are not running and I only turn on when I need to use them. This is another part of the web interface that seems not to work very well. So anytime I need to do anything with Docker, I'm going to go into the terminal. And so in the terminal, you can do a sudo docker psa, and that's going to give you all the same information. Most, it looks like it all the same information as you can see here that you can see here and if you just want to see the ones that are currently running you can do that or let me clear this to make it a little easier to see so now this is just showing you the containers that are actually running and if you want to see system resource usage of these containers that are running you can do a sudo docker stats And you can see it gives you name of the container, CPU usage, memory usage, NetIO, and disk IO. So as I go through installing the other services we'll get more familiar with different docker commands how to uh, set up and configure docker containers how to start them stop them to del delete them whatever you may want to do so you can see most of my services are in docker containers but there are a few that are just nginx websites so the dashboard is an Nginx website so this is not running in a Docker container um, same for DocuWiki and the notepad and basically if it was easy enough to set up an Nginx I set it up in Nginx instead of 
uh, having the extra overhead of running it in a Docker container, but each one of these things could also have been ran inside of a Docker container. I just did it this way because it's less overhead on the server and it was very easy. All right, open VPN. I do not have this running. I have, uh, I, I used to have this running, but now I've switched to WireGuard. WireGuard's the more popular VPN solution these days and it has very little overhead where it's very fast so uh, that had to be installed manually so if you do a sudo apt wireguard you just you do it right now it's already installed but you just do a sudo apt install wireguard to get it installed on your open media vault then you'd obviously have to configure it afterwards And then Samba shares. So this is how, uh, when you, you have these folders set up here, like your backup folder, your media folder, your public folder, how you actually share that is through these Samba shares so that your other devices can see and um, read, write whatever permissions you have set up for each directory there. So, um, yeah, you can see public media common common is the f folder that I have all my home folders uh, like download documents pictures etc those are all shared off of the common folders so um, and for Windows that would be the same folder it's just in your user user directory you also have your dashboard which is the page that you're greeted with when you log in system information performance stats so you can see load average you can see how hard your server is working through here this has gone up the more services i add the harder the server obviously has to work same for memory usages the more services you add the more memory is going to be used by the server but right for everything i use the rock pro 64 handles it perfectly fine again this is only for two users so the more users you have using it the also the the, uh, the faster hardware you're going to need so if you have 100 users and only one service rock rock pro 64 might not be able to handle that if you only have one user you probably could have 100 services and the rock pro 64 can handle it you know, of course depending on what each service is you know requires for RAM and CPU usage. Yeah, that's basically it for Open Media Vault web interface. In the next video, we're going to be going over one of these other services, how to set up, install, configure, and we will just be going, each episode we'll be going to a different service like DocuWiki, um, LiDAR, paperless, all these different things on, on how to get it set up so you can see which services you might want to install for yourself. Well, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.